You can leave it outside in the snow and guys can run past it and pick it up and do a bunch of reps and drop it. And they'll come back in two years, it'll still be there. When did the Russians do this? Hey guys, before we uh, watch this video, I just want you guys to know that this was shot before quarantine started back during our injury recovery season, which is usually January, February. Therefore, no social distancing is observed. So the Russians have been working on this you know, all post World War II. There's all these programs that we don't really know that much about. We just know that some of the outputs from some of the stuff in the 70s. Yeah. And a lot of this has to do with their space programs. Yeah. When they were like, we're gonna put people in space. We have to find a way to like, try and keep them healthy in space. So America did a lot of bands. We created yeah. rubber bands. The Soviets came up with a whole different systems of regulating yeah. stress and everything. And they used it for their military programs, they used it for space programs, and you see their Olympic programs. Like if you go to Circus LA, where is everybody in that f***ing circus from? They're all from Eastern Bloc. Whoa. Russian, Russian style training. They're masters of sport programs. Yeah. So they came up with really, really, really good training ideas. And it's not only since 2001 here that it's come into America. And we've modified the shit out of it, of course, because we're Americans and we modify everything. And we might have made it better, we don't know, because all of our athletes are voluntary, whereas over there they were a little less voluntary, right? You had a job. I have a friend who was a Russian wushu champion. She went to a special school and all they did was wushu. That was it, right? They learned to read and write and did wushu and they did it for eight hours a day. And that's why they create so many. So America's taken those ideas and been like, what if you did it with free choice? But wait a second, isn't wushu like Shaolin monks in the hills in the, of, of China hidden? Yeah, so wushu is the modern, like modern this. version of Shaolin. So Shaolin was all of this stuff. Wushu is where they turned it into a performance art. Yeah. So it's Jet Li, yeah. Jet Li, those guys, right? Yeah. Uh, that's the whole history of Kung Fu and Wushu. But Wushu is like basically the modern balletic version of Shaolin. It's a cool name for the, the, that particular martial art because it sounds the way it looks. You know, like Wushu, Wushu. Yes. Um, can, now, you were telling me uh, something about Captain America. Oh, so the way that I kind of understand this stuff is that at, during, after World War II, during the Cold War, like, the Soviets really did have, like, a super soldier program. Yeah. Kind of like in the comic books, you had Captain America and you have, who's the opposite of Captain America? There's just the red Captain, Captain Soviet. Captain Soviet guy. He's in the new Black Widow movie. Right, they had that, and so they tried all kinds of crazy shit. That's where like the Olympic uh, drug scandals come from in the 70s. They were trying to figure out, could they make a superhuman with all that right. stuff? And they had state sponsor for that. And so with kettlebells and everything else, they put all these guys, and they had different like test groups and different military units, and they would have them do different things, and then they would test them against each other to try and figure out which program was the best program because their solution, our solution to problems was bigger, more expensive fighters. Their solution was AK-47s and kettlebells. Mm. We're gonna make more cheap things than their one super expensive thing. Mm. And so they were two separate strategies, mm. but the fitness stuff that I teach mostly comes from Russian schools of thought, mm. which are very much based on that. You have one thing, how do you get the absolute most out of it? It's by understanding the math and the science behind it and then making it 7% more difficult every time, and then creating structural and physical changes in the body and the mind. So you're saying that even though I'm 50 years old, it's that. not too late for me to become a super soldier. No, no, I'm, the science is there. All you have to do is show up and do it. Super soldier, 2020. There we go.